In this movie, we're going to have a look at integration between Cinema 4D and After Effects and how to get files from Cinema 4D to After Effects and vice versa. So here we have my Cinema 4D folder and in there you'll find a folder called Exchange Plugins. In there, there's an After Effects folder and you need to go into whichever folder is appropriate for your operating system and then take the Cinema 4D AE zip file or equivalent and if you're installing it for CS6, at the time of recording, um, you would use the CS5.5 version. There may be a CS6 version out by the time you see this movie. So I then take this and drop it into my After Effects folder. So look for your After Effects CS6 folder and it goes into the plugins folder in After Effects and you then install it. So. Once you've installed it, if you're in Cinema 4D and you want to prepare something for After Effects, a couple of things to note. Here I have a little scene and I've placed some textures on walls and I've got very high shiny reflection here and some poster images on the wall here. And I've got several lights set up as well. Let's have a look at the camera motion as well. So we have some camera motion pulling back from the door and then going through the door. And I'm going to render this out and have a look at what options we have for doing multipass compositing and for accessing tags in After Effects. Now, you can access material IDs and UV and depth mats and all sorts of other properties from your 3D render in After Effects. But for some of them, you need to actually tag elements. So, for example, I've tagged this wall here, created a compositing tag. So to create one of these tags, if I right click on an item, I can add tags of various different kinds. So I want to go into Cinema 4D tags and add a compositing tag. And that will open up my compositing tag down in the editor here where I can make changes. So you want to go to Object Buffer and enable one of the object buffers. Now I've already added one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to enable this one as buffer six. And you're basically just giving it an ID number, which After Effects can then take advantage of. Now this is if you want to use some of the 3D effects, so the 3D channel effects. You may not want to use them, and I'll show you the difference between using those and using the multiple passes from Cinema 4D when we get over to After Effects. But this is just if you want to take advantage of those effects. If you just want to do a simple multi-pass render and render out multiple passes, then you can just go straight to Render and Render Settings. So we want to first of all go into Edit Render Settings. And in here we can set up the settings for our render, obviously. Now the first thing we're going to do is set up our settings for output. You can choose from the presets here and there are presets that match the After Effects presets. You'll recognize these in here. I'm not going to change these, but make sure you get these set up to match whatever your output is from After Effects. This is the important bit for the save bit. Basically, what we want to do is save two things. I'm going to choose RPF, and the reason is it gives me access to camera data and lots of other options like Z depth, object ID, UV coordinates, and all sorts of other things, the color, the coverage, all of these can be matted easily in After Effects using RPF files. So what we're doing is we're outputting an image sequence of RPF files, but we'll also output a multi-pass image. So instantly, I'm just going to put that on uh, alpha channel. And I've also changed this to 16 bits per channel, so we've got a bit more information in terms of luminance. Then you choose a name and you choose a location. So I'm going to choose a new location, so I'm just going to save it to my desktop. And important to create a folder, so let's create a folder for these, because it will create an image sequence. So you don't want to have lots and lots of images on your desktop, so we'll create a folder, save it in there, and we're ready to go with the RPF files. Then we're going to save a multi-pass image. So this time we're going to choose QuickTime Movie, and I've chosen the PNG codec for that, which is a good codec to choose if you want to keep your movie fairly lossless, 
but still want to have a little bit of compression on there to keep the size down. So I choose PNG over something like animation codec, which the file sizes are still a bit big with the animation codec. If you prefer the animation codec, though, that's absolutely fine. You can choose that. So in here, I'm choosing PNG from my list of codecs, but you can choose any codec that you want to work with. And I'm going to choose best depth. In fact, I'm going to choose millions of colors plus so that I get an alpha channel with that. And I'm going to click OK. I then go in here and the only option is 8 bits per channel for my QuickTime movie. And we'll also save it this time to the desktop into a new folder called Multipass. OK, and we'll click on Create and save it there. OK, now the next thing is compositing project file. So this is another thing that Cinema 4D can output for me, an After Effects project file. So I'm going to say Save an After Effects project file, include timeline marker, include 3D data, and I say Save project file, and let's just save it to the desktop, and we'll save it into my Multipass folder. OK, so once I've set that up, I then go to Multipass, and this is where I choose my options. Now, I want to render out all of my lights. Normally, this is set to none. So if you want to render your lights as separate passes, you can do so here. Then you can choose how many channels you want in each pass. So I'm going to choose three channels, Diffuse, Specular, and Shadow, which means I have control over these elements within After Effects. Then anti-aliasing, I'm going to leave that on its default settings, but you can change that if you want to get a better quality, although that's on best quality at the moment. Um, you can update this and make it slightly better quality by choosing something like Gaussian. We're going to leave it on cubic though. You do also have options for outputting stereoscopic 3D images. Again, I'm not going to cover those here, but you can have a look at those yourself later. If we go back to the multipass options as well, you can also open the multipass options and see all the passes that will be output. Now notice it's outputting absolutely everything, diffuse, shadow, reflection. And basically what it's going to do, instead of rendering one solid QuickTime movie, it's going to render each element of my scene as a separate pass. So the shadows will be rendered out separately from the reflections. And then After Effects will composite them together and give us access to all of these elements. Now you can selectively choose what you want to output. Normally I wouldn't put output everything, but I'm going to do it just so that you can see how it looks. And an easy way to add all of those is just to click Add All, and that will add everything to the multipass options. Once we've done that, we can come out of our render settings and then go to Add to Render Queue. And that will add our item to the render queue ready to render. Now it asks me, do I want to save the project? I'm going to say yes, we do want to save it. And then it's going to have a little think about where it needs to put everything. And once it's ready, we can then output it. So again, you can check your locations here that they're correct for where you want things to go. And once you're absolutely happy with everything, we can just go up to jobs and start rendering. And that's going to start rendering my scene as an RPF sequence and as a QuickTime sequence. Now, the next step is we're going to have a look at what it creates and bring it into After Effects. So I'm going to leave you while my project renders.